Hello, welcome back. Once again, my name is Glenn Einschlag, and as we, as I discussed before, I went through all of the eight questions for ascertaining a read's strengths and weaknesses, and now uh, we're going to uh, go through several reads and run through the questions uh, for you to see how I apply them. As you can see, I have several reads. Over here, I have my tools arranged, so I'm ready to rock and roll. So first, uh, we're going to take a read. Um, again, I've uh, assembled reads in uh, varying stages in their development. One great thing about these eight questions is that they can be applied to any read at any stage in its development. And as we all know, reads change as we play on them and as they break in. So different things need to be done to them at different times in their existence. So we can do these eight questions as many times as we need before it read settles down. And I've also assembled reads from uh, some students with which I'm unfamiliar so that I can show you how I would deal with them. So let's just pick this read that I believe is very early in the early stages of its development, and we'll run through the questions and see what can be done, or if nothing can be done. The first question is, is the read too open or too closed? And I'm going to do the test that I described earlier, which is playing a B-flat major Hertzberg scale in its first scale articulation, all staccato from low B-flat to high C. is a little bit on the open side. As you could deduce, it had some trouble speaking in the low register, and I just felt as if my embouchure uh, had to work a little harder than what was comfortable for me. So, it's a little too open. The next question is, is the reed responding and or tapering effectively? Once again, I'm going to use the D natural and F sharp found in the uh, Overture to the Marriage of Figaro uh, excerpt, and I'm going to play them as soft as I can with a tuner on to see how softly I can attack and taper the note and how in tune I can get it. feel about this, the way this is behaving in this test, is that sometimes the attack was much more successful than the taper. So I would say that the taper and response on this read can be improved upon. Okay, so so far it's a little too open and it's a little unresponsive. The third question is, are the E, F, or C sharp dropping? Now, once again, I'm going to play those notes. And as I described before, I'm going to hammer a nail into them. Let's see what happens. Again, don't be shy to sound like that. We need to let the reed stand on its own merits. This was not a test to sound beautiful on, obviously. We have to determine whether the reed is sagging on those notes. And I feel it is. The E natural is sagging much more than the others, but I think we can say that the reed is dropping. Okay, so once again, it's too open, it's unresponsive, and the E is dropping. Okay, is it too sharp or too flat is the next question. I'm going to take my tuner <clears throat> and I'm going to put it on and I'm going to play a two octave F major scale, mezzo forte, slowly, 
and I'm going to play it as naturally as I normally would, adjusting for my instrument's intonation idiosyncrasies, and I'm just going to look at the tuner and gather information. I am not going to adjust. Again, I need to let this read reveal its own intonation qualities. Okay. show that this read is a flat. It was pretty much under pitch on almost every single note. So once again, let's keep a tally. It's a little too open, it's unresponsive, the E is dropping, and it's flat. Okay, it's starting to reveal its nature. Now the next question is, is the low register responding well enough? I'm going to play a low C sharp as quietly as I possibly can and we'll see what happens. As we can see, the low register is not responding very well. Good information to have. The next question is, is the a reed closing up in the high register? For that, I'm going to play a high A, B, and C sharp rather loudly, and we'll see if it closes up and stops vibrating. Okay, the answer is no, it is not closing up in the high register. Okay, the next two questions are, is the reed not vibrating enough or stuffy? Or is the reed vibrating too much, or what I would say, wild? I feel that uh, based on the way it was playing, the way it feels in my mouth, and the way it was playing, it's a little more on the wilder side and vibrating a little too much rather than not vibrating enough. And that's just something that I've developed an intuition for, and that you will too, as you <clears throat> journey through these questions and play on many different types of reads. Again, I don't necessarily have a test for those last two questions. Those are just a general uh, feel of the read. Those are general feel of the read type questions. Okay, so the questions are over, let's review. The read is slightly too open, Okay, the tip opening is on the open side. It is not very responsive and it is not tapering very well. It can be improved upon. The reed uh, is dropping on the E, F, and perhaps the C sharp. The reed is flat. The reed is not responding well in the low register. It is not closing up in the high register. And it's a little on the wild side. Okay. In a very short amount of time, I've gained a lot of information about this read that I can use. Now, uh, I have to decide what I want to do with this read. I have many different options. I can try to improve upon it, or I can keep it as it is, or I can discard it. Well, I don't want to discard it right now, Something in me thinks that there might be some potential, and also it's rather early in the reed's life. So I feel that perhaps it will change as I play on it and as I work on it. Hi, uh, now that I've decided that I want to work on this reed and improve upon it, I uh, have to decide what aspect of the reed's playing characteristics I would like to improve. Usually, the first place I will go um, to improve any read is uh, altering the wires. And the reason is because if I don't like the result, I can always put it back to where it was before. Um, one can't do that when you're scraping wood off of the cane. Of course, 
it can't be put back. But the wires can be uh, put back to where they were. So I like to go there first. Now, the two questions that are, I feel, most interrelated are, is the read too open? And is the, re is the read open or closed? And is the read flat or sharp? So we've determined that this read is too open and flat. So we have to adjust these wires by either squeezing them or crushing them um, based on its intonation traits, tendencies. So it's flat and too open. So as was discussed in previous uh, videos in this series, if I squeeze the second wire from the sides, that will have the effect of closing the tip opening a bit, which is what I want because this reed is too open, and it will accentuate the spine, thus having the effect of raising the pitch a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. So I take my pliers and I do this while looking at the tip opening so that I can see how it's affecting the tip opening while I'm doing it. First, I will look at the wires to make sure that they are perfectly conforming to the shape of the tube and I don't want any gaps uh, to ensure that the effect of uh, my squeezing it or crushing it is affecting the tube of the cane and not filling in the gap. So I'm going to squeeze the second wire from the sides to close up the reed and raise the pitch. Okay, and there we go. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. The second thing I'm going to do is because the um, response and taper needed to be improved or could have been improved upon, I'm going to check on the status of the tip opening, of the tip taper, I should say, not the tip opening. And what I do is I like to uh, take, put a plaque in the reed. I like to take my thumb and start on the plaque and bring it down to see how well my reed is tapering into the plaque. And it's not bad. It could be improved upon, but it is not bad. Now, here's where I have to make a decision. The reed is sinking on the E or F or C sharp. To me, that indicates that a reed is too weak and needs to be strengthened. Okay, therefore, I'm slightly reticent to take a lot of cane off this reed, or I have to be very specific at where I take cane off. What I'm going to do is I am going to accentuate the spine and underline the taper from center to side. Reason being is that, as we discussed, this reed is slightly on the wild side. To me, that means that there's not enough taper from center to sides. So I am just going to very gently, with my knife, um, I'm going to take wood off on the outer channels uh, to make the spine be relatively somewhat heavier, okay? Um, I, you, I do use files, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use a knife so that you can see where the wood is coming off. Okay, so we're gonna start on this side first. I am going to gently, again, very gently, start over here. As you can see, the cane is only coming off on the outer channels. Nothing really in the center because it is already weak enough that the E is dropping, but this will hopefully make the spine seem somewhat heavier, thus helping the flatness of the pitch and the wildness of the way it feels. Again, I'm gonna be on the left side. Notice that my knife is always usually somewhat perpendicular to the blade of the reed, and it is not 
using a scooping motion. It is just gliding across the surface of the reed. And as you can see, I'm only concerning myself really with the outer channels. This is, again, not something I do on every reed, but I'm doing it on this reed because I want the center and spine to be accentuated. And because I can't put re, because uh, I can't put cane back on, I have to take cane off where it's too heavy. Now I'm going to do that on the other side, very gently, just to make sure that it's tapering. Not only do I have to be mindful of the taper from center to side, but also from back to front. So as you notice, I started taking cane off towards the front. Then I move back and I go over the place where I removed cane a second time. Then I move back even further. And then I move, remove cane over the place I removed a second time and then a third time. This will assure that you will get a taper, which is very, very, very important. And I'm just going to gently do it on this side. Again, very, very, very slight. Um, the E is dropping, so I'm very mindful of that. And I have accentuated the spine not only through squeezing the second wire, but also making the taper from center to side much more accentuated. So let's see if this has improved the read at all. Okay, uh, now that I have worked a little bit on this read to correct the problems of a tip opening that was too open and a pitch that was a little on the low side and uh, a wildness about its playing characteristics, uh, I'd like to try it and see whether what I've done to it has had any effect whatsoever. So now that I've worked on it, I will go through the questions again. So the first question is, is it too open or too closed? Okay, I feel that it is no longer too open. In fact, it might be a little bit on the closed side. I'm going to leave it for right now. The second question, of course, is it is, is it responding or tapering? So let's see what happens. Now, I think the quality of the response and taper is slightly improved, but let the record show that it was a little on the sharp side. So whereas the quality of it is slightly improved from before, uh, I can't say the response and taper is precisely where I want it to be because it is on the high side. So I say that the response and taper can still be improved upon. Now, I'm going to answer the third question, which is, are the E, F, and C sharp dropping? Aha, uh -huh. now what, I've, what we've discerned from that is that the E is far less unstable. This is good news. Now, the next question is, is it too sharp or too flat? So I'm gonna turn on my tuner, I'm gonna play the F major scale and see where the general pitch center is. flat than it was before. In fact, on some notes, it was uh, riding a little sharp. So to me, that says it has improved. 
on the incredible flatness that it was portraying beforehand. Now, I'm going to answer the question of, is the low register responding well? So once again, I'm going to play a low C sharp to see whether the work that I did had any effect on the low register response. I'm going to play a low C sharp, soft as I can. Wish me luck. Okay, I think it has been improved upon, uh, which is also good news. Now what I'd like to know is if the reed is closing up in the high register. I'm going to play the A, B, and C sharp. Remember, it was not closing up before. Let's see if it is now. Ah, okay. So we have not sacrificed any of its high register strength, even though I removed wood off of the cane, off of the reed, <laughs> off of the cane that makes up the reed. Um, the reason for that, I believe, is because I removed cane towards the outer parts of the channels on all four quadrants of the reed, which relatively made the spine heavier, therefore preserving uh, the high register strength. Now, uh, I need to determine whether it is too stuffy or too wild, and again, there is no real test for this. It's merely an intuitive feel type of a thing. I feel that it is not stuffy. I don't feel like it's not vibrating enough, but I feel that the wildness, meaning it was vibrating too much, is greatly tamed. It does not feel big in my mouth. It does not feel wildly uncontrollable. I feel that the reed is far improved. Can it be improved upon even more? Of course. However, I am going to stop with this read now and I am going to choose to play on it for a while because it's very early in this read's development and I would like to guard against doing too much too soon. At this point in a read's life, I would rather just guide it towards a pretty good uh, intonation tendency, and also let it have a very comfortable, free-blowing feel to it. I feel that it can play all of the registers of the bassoon relatively comfortably, so there are many things that I can practice and work on uh, comfortably, and uh, that will allow this read to break in in a uh, very comfortable way. So uh, yeah, I'm going to stop with this read. Thank you.